In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a hoover effect for the X labels here below once we hover over a specific bar. So let's start look how to do this. So to do this, the first thing that we're going to do here is make sure you have the border template, which you can find here on charges3.com getting started. Once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to have the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page. And of course, got a question, put it on Discord. All the links are in the description box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and let's create the plugin that will allow to create this effect. So I say plugins. And then we're going to say here, let's give this the name Hoover Scale Label. Copy that. Let's say constant Hoover Scale Label ID Hoover Scale Label. And then we're going to say here, after we draw the data sets, we want to have uh, the effect in place. And you might wonder. Why after? Because it will already draw the item. Well, in this case, I need to know at least when we hover over an item that it's being drawn, it knows that we're there. And then we have a trick where we allow to redraw the scale that I will talk about later on once we get there. So what I need to do here first is an object destructuring. What's it? Uh, here, char uh, constant equals char. That's the object that we're going to use and then I want to have here the CTX I would like to have the tooltip and I will have here the scales and specifically the X skill I will be needing I just put in here the Y but it's not necessary so then I'm going to say here console log and let's explore the tooltip right away so what can we get out of here well let me show you if we refresh open up the developer tab this is the one I need, the underscore active. And the reason why something is underscore here, it means that Char.js developer team is thinking on figuring out where to re or replace that, to put it in another place. Everything with an underscore would indicate it will change or it might change in the future. They have, it's on their list. So be considerate of that or be mindful of that. However, since this is still fine, we can use this as long as this works. And when I hover over one of these items, you can see we get all of this information. And what I need here eventually is the active underscore with the value. Let's see if I can find one. What we could do here is tooltip underscore active. Once we have this, save, refresh. You can see here we get the value. And when we move away from it or hover away from it, it will disappear and that's for us very important because now we can see here which value we have we have here the index six which means uh the data point six which is sunday all of the information we get in here but the only information in our case that is important is index six because we have here a category scale meaning that this is index zero one two three all the way to six so we have the coordinates with another trick we can get this coordinate but there's another way that's easier so what I want to do now is create an if statement and then we're going to say here if we have this active, say a dot length. If that is the case, what I would like to do is here the active and then probably here index zero and then we say a dot index just to get the specific index value that we're hovering on. Refresh, there we are, you can see six, five, four, etc. etc. So it understands everything. Let's delete this one and this one can be hidden but I would like to get the index value here so what I'm going to say here constant index will be equal to this item that we just created so once we did that now we can start to create the shape so to do the shape I'm going to say ctx.save to save all variables above and then I'm going to say ctx.begin path to create a shape that's independent of anything else now we're going to say what is the color let's say here ctx at fill style and for now let's give it a solid gray color a british gray next what i want to do here is i want to start to draw the shape so i'm going to say here there will be a rounded rectangle and this rounded rectangle have five values it has the x value the y value the width the height and if ever a border radius so for the radius, you could do zero to get just 
um, edges, sharp edges, or a border radius, then you just put in here five or any value you desire. So in this, in this case, I'll just select five, that's more than enough. So now we have to figure out all of these. So let's say here for the X for now, I'll just put in 10 and the, the Y position will be 10 as well. And then for the width, we're going to say 50 pixels. For the height, I'm going to set this on 20. And the reason why is I know that this text here will be at least a font size of 12. That's the default. However, I want some space up and some space down. So making it 20, we have enough padding top and padding down. So now we have that. Let's say here, ctx.fill to draw the shape. Let's save this. Refresh. All right, and as you can see here, the shape works and it will only appear the moment we hover and show the tooltip. So if you hover over something and if you move away, it disappears. Let's push this now downwards here. So what I want to do here now is to get this position, I'm going to say here, X, let's say a get pixel, and that's not even downwards by the way, this will be aligned in the horizontal level based on the text here. So don't worry, the down will be the Y value, I'll work on that later on. And let's say here for the X, get pixel for the value, and the value that we have will be the index value that we have created. Let's save that, refresh, and now if you hover over it, this works, but you might say, why is it in the center or it's off? It's not really correct. Well, it starts drawing from the center and then going further to the right. So what I need to do here now is to calculate what is the width of our item, which is 50, and reposition that. You could say here, minus 25, to make it very simple, but hard coded. Now it's in the center, or we could just say here, constant width will be equal to 50 and then we say here 50 this and minus the width divide by 2 that makes all sense so we have the right position there we are a nicely soft coded version that works let's push it downwards so to do that what i need to do here is to know what is the exact size here so for that we can go into the x scale so I'm going to say here, console log x, because that's the shorthand that we created. Open up here, you can see it's a category scale. So on that specific scale, we can say here, this is the bottom. We know the bottom is 319. That's This is the very bottom of the x scale. The height of the x scale, so basically between here, is 28.4 pixels. And then we have the top. Let's look for the top. Uh, there. That is uh, 290.6 pixels. So basically this here plus height would be equal to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the height and then maybe we can, uh, the height, we need to grab this one and we're going to grab the top. And I'm just going to figure out what is exactly the right position from there on. So what I'm going to do here for the X, let's start here then on this one, or sorry, that's the Y. The Y value, you're going to say here, X dot top. Let's save that, refresh, and as you can see here, now we're getting somewhere, but we're not close here, we are slightly off. So what we could do now is just to get the right calculation for that one. We can say constant Y position will be equal to X top, and then what we could do as well, plus the height, so we say here X dot height, the 28 plus plus, and we can divide this, well, if you divide it by two, it will be in the lower half, so we can put it up. Let's say divide by four. It's 28, well, let's do that one, and let's see what we get. Let's save that one. We can this copy this and put it in here, save. And now, to be honest, this looks quite good, with the exception that we're overlapping the text or maybe we're not maybe we're just blending in the text let's double check that by saying here blue and now you can see here it's clear that we're on top of the text and of course the reason for that is because we have the after data sets draw meaning that when we draw everything including the data sets it's done so what we need to do here is basically say i want to redraw the scale so what i'm going to do here is 
First of all, for all, I will say CTX of restore to undo everything above. And then we're going to say here chart dot scales dot x scale. And then we're going to say here dot draw. And what I want to draw here, we just draw that. We say here chart dot CTX. So we're just going to redraw the scale on the canvas, which is the CTX here. Now, all right. So once we did that, save, refresh. Now, as you can see here, it is nicely being redrawn and you can see the text is on top instead of behind. So now, of course, this is quite, uh, this is such a bad match. So let's start to fix the color for the background. So what I want to do here now for the color, instead of this blue, I just going to say here, data dot data set index zero dot, um, we can say here border color. I'm going to grab basically the colors of these and I'm going to select the index, which is this one here. Uh, let's say here border color index. Save, refresh. There we are. Now this looks perfect and it's nicely matched. And maybe instead of border color, background color would be even more appropriate. So it will blend in more, uh, more better or we'll make at least the text a bit more visible. There we are. And that's it.